I'm taking Lee to this smaller dog park that's closer by. Because it's a lot easier than walking him. Walking him just wears me out. And I don't want to get worn out before work. But Lee needs a break from behind that wall. So it's the right thing to do. Only got three hours of sleep, but take things day by day. Also, in the afternoons, there's more people there. And hopefully I can hit it where there's maybe no one there, or one or two. We'll see. You know, through this neighborhood message board, somebody recommended some organizations. And for some reason, I just not comfortable with it turning over lead to an organization. I guess maybe because of what happened last time. I just want to meet somebody in the neighborhood face to face and get a get a gut feeling about them. Me, not an organization. Just in case you're watching the first video about Lee on my channel. Lee was adopted out across the river and the people couldn't handle him. I don't know because he was active or what. But they either dumped him somewhere or cut him loose. They scanned the chip. It came back to my neighbor because the neighbor is still the registered owner. And my neighbor called the people who adopted Lee to find out what happened. And they won't answer their phone. So, no telling what Lee's been through across the river over there. Or how far he's traveled. He's very lucky to be alive. I'm hoping that my automatic lights turn off soon. So I won't get a ticket for my busted headlight. I have some ideas. Just in case I get a windfall or anything. About opening up a paid dog park. Just a small fee so people will be responsible for their dogs. And it won't be these rinky dink dog parks. I'll design it the way I want to design it. Have a country feel to it. Probably no sidewalks. Also, maybe a large piece of land and have a dog rescue. Because people like to adopt dogs that are well cared for. I'm just thinking out loud here. If a new owner doesn't come through for Lee, things may work out in a few years where I do have a small piece of land and I can get Lee out there. I don't know, just a thought. No one here, just as I predicted. That heat wears them out and they won't get up early. Not even old people. Let's do it. This is Forest Park. Smaller dog park. They have some little pools you can fill up for them. See he's running out there. Full blast. Look at him go. And some pavilions. Double gates so no dogs get out. Benches. Well, he just did his business and I have to go over here and do like most people, well, most people should do is clean up after their dog. They provide these little black bags. You just stick your hand in them and tie it up, dispose of it. 
They even have tennis balls out here. Look at him hauling. Watch this, I'm gonna get the tennis ball. I may go put some fresh water in there. We'll have an echo under this pavilion. I was going to take him to this other dog park. And the lady told me that she wasn't sure that I should go to that other dog park because somebody had a Nerf football out there in the dog park, left it for the dogs. And apparently the Nerf had full of poison so the dog acted dropped the football acted like he wanted to go home and then a little while later the dog died that's a happy dog right there I guess it's not too dirty for a dog. No, but about this Nerf football, I'm wondering if it could have been something something natural with the uh, muddy water sitting in that Nerf football and the hot weather getting to that foam and becoming toxic. Even if that were the case, I don't know if it would work that quickly on the dog, but <sighs> who thinks like that? poison a dog yeah so they advise you now don't let your dog pick up any objects in the park and they clear the park of all that stuff that's that's tragic story man looks like somebody didn't pick up after their dog Way down there is the small donkey park. I think under 25 pounds. This is for the smaller dogs. It's okay, I guess. I thought it was small when I first saw it, but it, it's okay out here. We'll give you a long shot. Maybe it seemed small when all those other dogs were here. Lee just spotted a cat over there. It's tennis ball time. Uh, he won't quit. He just wants to retrieve. He's wearing himself out. You know, if these things aren't too expensive, I might get one for his backyard.
It's going to be 95 today. I'm going to see if I can find him a can of Alpo. Some place that's open. And maybe get some breakfast at the same time. And I might do something a little differently today. I'm going to catch up on some sleep. An hour or two before starting work. Yeah, it'll be a little hotter, but I'm feeling kind of run down like I do need some sleep. On second thought, I don't think I'll sleep before work because it's already starting to get hot and I'll miss my morning burst. But I will take an awesome afternoon nap with just a sheet over me and the fan on high and a belly full of water. Something to look forward to. With lamb, rice, and gravy. Something weird happened. I guess you would call it a short term memory loss or a blackout. I didn't go unconscious. But I'm still, I don't know if I've ever experienced anything like that. I don't know if it was the heat or what. I don't know. Maybe I had a lot on my mind or. So I looked at my truck. And my Time Master was already loaded up, the ramps were up, the chain was on. And I had the weed eater in my hands. I don't remember getting my weed eater out. I don't remember loading the mower, doing the chain or anything. And I kind of laughed. And you know when you try to recall something, you'll get like a fast forward playback. And you'll remember. Nothing. One big blank. That is, that's weird. It's like a, I lost time. I don't know. I'm still trying to remember the gap where I loaded my mower, put the chain on, put the ramps up, pulled my weed eater out of my cab, and started weed eating. That little gap right there, it's no memory. And I don't think that's ever happened. I hope it doesn't happen again. I'm on my lunch break and this lady on my street just called me. She said, do you know what happened last night? I said, no. So it turns out diagonally across the street, there was a huge drug raid of those college kids that I was talking about that don't cut the grass in my previous video. And I remember hearing a very loud bang. It sounded like somebody dropped a dumpster off of a building. I mean, loud bang. I went out to my patio side towards the boulevard. I didn't see anything. I saw one of my neighbor's um, lift gate was down. I thought maybe he dropped something. So I went back to bed. But little did I know, the whole other side of my house, where I hardly go, was all lit up with SWAT teams, flashbangs, yelling at everybody, get back in the house, we have a warrant. So they pulled all the kids out in their underwear and everything. Everybody was arrested. So apparently, everybody in that house was dealing drugs. And she told me that a mother showed up frantic looking for her son had no idea what was going on that's always the case isn't it mother never knows that the son is dealing drugs and you know the lady that called me told the mother oh he's been arrested you know <laughs> she was in shock of course but that's all I know 
that loud bang must have been a, some type of flash bang but I really didn't think they were that loud. That really must have stunned them really good. <laughs> they don't play around dragging those kids out in their underwear. Just found an article put online at 4.51 p.m. BRPD arrest eight for alleged trafficking of cocaine and other drugs. Here's what detectives seized. 261 grams of powder cocaine, 302 grams of high-grade marijuana, 1,336 grams of marijuana wax, 1.2 grams of MDMA, 4 grams of LSD, 33 units of dexmethylphenidate. 9 grams of psilocybin mushrooms and about $3,000. Okay, I'm not going to call out these kids' names, but they're 22, 24, 21, 20. Eight of them. Let's take a look at the cast of characters. I want to show you where this house is located in reference to my house. Looks like they cut the grass. Let's look. Right there. That's it. This drug raid reminded me of another story in my neighborhood about a lady who worked for the sheriff's office and her daughter. The man was the stepfather. Anyway, he raised her for about half of her life. She was about 25. The daughter worked at a bank. And I don't know if this is common to you, but I've heard of a lot of stories of children of law enforcement get into a lot of trouble. Maybe they think they can not get in trouble. Anyway, maybe that's what this girl was thinking. This girl worked at a bank and she was skimming. I don't know what kind of method she was using, changing deposit slips or whatever, but she didn't think that she would get caught. But she did get caught and they showed up at the mother's door. And when they told her that her daughter was picked up for embezzlement or whatever the term they used, she fell to the floor literally. She just dropped. And um, she hadn't been the same since because she raised her right. They raised her very good. And when they got the exp explanation from the daughter the daughter said <laughs> she needed money for clothes. I guess she had no fear about getting caught because I would not want to get arrested and go to jail for stealing a little bit of money for clothes. I just remembered another neighborhood story. This man that lived on a circle near our house a long, long time ago. We were about 10, I guess. And my little brother and our friend lived next door to that man. That man walked out on his driveway. And so my little brother and our friend decided to start popping bottle rockets. And nobody knew or just didn't think about 
his war experience. He's been in combat. And apparently he had a flashback. And he hit the deck, went in fetal position. And put his hands over his ears. And was shaking, you know, like, no, no. And so... Of course they stopped popping bottle rockets. They went over to see about him. But he really thought he was under attack there. That was must have been very scary for him. I just got another call from somebody on a two week schedule. It's right at two weeks today, Thursday. And they said, I was wondering about you. Our grass is tall. I know it is because it's June and I told you that two weeks is too long. But I, I just think it's amazing how words do not enter their head. I say it to them, they're looking at me when I say it to them, but it either goes over their head or it goes in their ear and it bounces off of something and they just do not comprehend it. Oh well, we're in peak heat right now and that's a thick yard. And I'll be in full sun with that time master trying to get through that stuff. Last job of the day though. They're putting the house in the market July 10th. And I'll be losing this customer, but at least from July 10th until it sells, I get to cut the grass every five days for curb appeal. Man, that is very tall. Said these caladiums are coming out. Don't throw grass in there, but trim real good. Because I'll have to pick it out myself. Well, take your pick. Trim or not trim, because if I trim, grass is going to fly.